Hello there and welcome to Brands Hatch in Kent for rounds three and four of the Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Steve Roberts and Owen Hunter shared the wins in the season opener at Donington Park, but with stiff opposition from more than 40 drivers, will we see a different winner today? Matt Suckling spoke to two of the fancied runners. Paul Rose from the BMW Championship. Last year, of course, you raced Mighty Minis. You were the uh, rookie champion. How do the two cars kind of compare? Um, they don't compare at all, really. No. Uh, it's quite a new thing. That was part of the plan this year, just to uh, mix it up. We, we come racing for fun, so it's nice to learn new things and be with a new paddock. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, enjoying it. This is your second meeting, of course, after Donington Park. How did the, the first round go? Uh, yeah, it went... Uh, bittersweet really I, I had a really good first race and finished eighth um, which we were over the moon with uh, the second race I was running in seventh and just all my own fault just kept throwing the car off the circuit and uh, dropped back to 18th so but a good weekend all round yeah and here at Brands has slightly different circuit much shorter as well how do you reckon you'll go here um, we tested here on Friday and I wasn't really on the pace um, the wet this morning's brought me closer to it um, I qualified six so really happy with that result um, but yeah, with the race it's probably going to be dry, so just going to have to see how it goes really. And who do you reckon you're going to be racing hard with uh, here today? Uh, I think James Wynn Stanley uh, in the yellow car um, and a few others. It's going to be quite tight where I am, I think. It's going to be the front six breakaway mm -hmm. uh, and then quite, quite close behind. Well Paul, have some good racing, hope all goes well. Thank you very much, cheers. Alex G racing in the uh, BMW Championship once again this year. We know you go well at Brands Hatch year on year, take the wins. How do you do that? Uh, well, we've we've uh, we've had luck here. It was, I think my first ever win uh, was here. In fact, my f I think it was my second race ever uh, was here. Um, it's just a, a track that suits me well. Um, yeah, I've got no real secret. I just <laughs> get a feel for it. I, you have everyone has a track that they like, uh, they feel comfortable with, um, and Brands is mine. Um, it's it is the most frustrating circuit in, probably out there because you end up having to prioritise certain corners that you set the car up in the dry. Um, but even th that said, when you get to, to the qualifying, all that goes out the window and you just you know cope with what you've got at the time. You've been out this morning so far. Track conditions, car all handling well? Uh, the, the car's brilliant. Yeah, the car, thanks to uh, uh, AD Lenzer and Andrew Chazang, uh, they, the car has been mega. Um, We've had a few issues at Donington. Uh, hopefully, moving forward, we've we've sorted all those. Um, but yeah, the, the wet always mixes things up. Um, unfortunately, it's drying. It was drying through the whole session. So, uh, the person on the last lap, uh, most probably, if they were free, uh, they, they they got the pole. Um, where it could have been anyone's. But uh, fourth fourth was good. Fourth was good. So. Well, as at Donington Park, three groups and three races required to accommodate all of the 44 competitors that have arrived here at Brands Hatch this weekend. This is Groups B and C that are up first. And on pole position, Steve Roberts, the double winner from Donington Park. Alongside him is Ian Jones. Row two, Ben Pearson and Richard Miles. The third row is Owen Hunter and James Nut Brown. Lights out then, away we go, and it is a good start by Nut Brown in the white car from the third row of the good go row back, and it's Josh Harvey that we're on board with now. That looks like uh, the Ben Pearson car that was slow away from the second row of the grid that he's alongside now. Richard Miles has got away well in the 24 car, and a spinner there looks to be Pearson, and also the 27 car of Jonathan Davison. They just about managed to miss those spinning cars. Someone else has gone off. Uh, around the outside there, that may have been the 34 car of John Watt, possibly, that went trekking through the gravel trap down there at Paddock Hill Bend on lap one. So there's cars and there's bits of bodywork that marshals are going into the gravel trap to pick up. I can see number seven, Adam Morgan, in the blue car towards the back of the grid. And you can see the spots of rain on the camera lens there. It's sort of a decidedly damp morning here at Brands Hatch. James Gornall has got his wipers on. James started the race on the outside of row four of the grid. Let's see what he can do on this opening lap of the race. It's already been rather chaotic. The side-by-side -side action up ahead. It looks like James is going to have made up, I think, one place on this opening lap. Looks like he's going to come through in P7 with the lead being held by the 58 car of the man from the outside of the front row, Ian Jones. There's Gornall there, the white car with the orange stripe. You can see him getting stuck into the thick of it already and he's made up another place up to sixth position. He now goes, he's gone through ahead of the 88 car of James Nutbrown right at the beginning of the second lap of the race. Oh, that's Jones there going wide up at Druids. Steve Roberts, will he need a second invitation to capitalise? 
Well, maybe he might on this occasion. You can see Roberts there in the Raw Motorsport prepared car, out in his new car for the first time this weekend, because of course at Donington Park, he borrowed from our Darvers machine. So, it's Jones, the former production BMW racer that leads in second place, it's Steve Roberts. Third at the end of lap one was the 47 car off Owen Hunt, who won one of the races at Donington Park. The two leaders are gonna go side by side here through Clearways and Clark Curve towards the end of the opening lap of the race. And they'll start lap number three, the second lap of the race, I should say. They start lap three now. Roberts has his nose in front at the start of this lap and he's through on the inside going into Paddock Hill Bend. So Roberts leads, Jones in second place. It's already quite a big gap back to the third place car, which is still that of Owen Hunter, number 47. Richard Miles is there in fourth position. It's Josh Harvey that is in fifth. Here is a battle going on further back. That's Michael Gray in the number 19 car, started right in the middle of the grid on row nine for this one, the Scottish driver. He's got behind him the recovering Jonathan Davis. Oh, no, it's not Jonathan Davis, is it? Well, that's Jonathan Davis at the back of the group, number 27, just ahead of Declan McDonnell. Davis there trying to make a move on one of the cars. Down the inside he went and someone going very wide there. That looks to be the number 71 car, which is Adam Reid. He started on row five of the grid. And he's going to lose an awful lot of ground. In fact, I think he might be pulling up to retire from the race. So, Roberts it is that leads. Jones in second. And now Hunter, who's going after the top two, has closed the gap onto the leaders. Hunter had a win and another podium finish at Donington Park. He's in the podium positions today. And he'll be looking, actually, to try and improve on that and get up into the top two, maybe even have another win here. And there's Josh Harvey in the Harvey Motorsport car, the white car with the orange roof in fifth position. And I know that Richard Miles, well, he's going well. I think he had some concerns about whether he'd be able to get out in qualifying this morning in his designated qualifying session. The 28 car is that of Dan Kirby. He started on row seven of the grid, but back to the leaders. Up at Clearways once more. So I think some rain coming down by the looks of it. Hunter there in third position. And he's now closer to Jones than Jones is to Roberts as they come through to end another lap. Hunter there in third place, the former Saxmax champion from a few years ago. Racing in the Compact Cup for a couple of seasons now. Had his maiden podium finish quite recently. Certainly he and his dad Dave very pleased with that result up at Donington Park a month ago. Roberts was even more delighted with his victories. Roberts, of course, the champion from 2013. He gave best to Stuart Voice last year. Oh, and was that a bit of contact? I think it was because there's some bodywork that has gone flying off. Jones there, the ex cart race, just touching the back of Roberts in the lead of the race. So we now go on board with Gornall in sixth position still. That's Josh Harvey up ahead. Turn Harvey is just behind Richard Miles in that 24 car. Past the IT analyst from Richmond, but Gornell, of course, the Expedition GT champion from a few years ago. We're back into club racing now in the Gas Shocks Compact Cup. And this is the view from Josh Harvey's car. He now is attacking Richard Miles here for fourth position as they go across the start and finish line towards Paddock Hill Bend for another lap. And he still can't find a way through, so it's still Miles that holds on to fourth place. And Harvey, who's done a little bit of Formula Fording in the past down at Castlecombe, he's there in fifth position. Still the top three clear of the rest of the field, though. Behind, well, it's looking relatively spread out. You can certainly spot Declan McDonald's car with the uh, Dayglow pink and yellow livery on the black background. The former low-cost and mighty mini champion. As Joe Wiggin just behind him now in actual fact. The two of them making their way up into Druids and Wiggin there having a look upon the inside. A car that is as yet unlivered. Another of the Mac Attack racing cars. They're heading their way down towards Graham Hill Bend. There's more excitement going on further behind though because that is Ben Pearson who started on the second row of the grid trying to recover some of that lost ground. He was flat last at the end of flat one after that spin. He's been gradually making up a few places as this race has gone on. He's still not yet halfway up the order, though. Miles there as one of the marshals 
just dashes to pick up. I think that was some of the bodywork that went for Burton, one of the two leaders. Had a bit of a light contact a couple of laps ago, and the leaders are very close together again, look. I think they're just going past one of the back markers. And now we have Hunter, don't we, up into second position as well amongst all of that. On board we go with James Gornall now. Past that slower car that's going a lap down. That may well be the car of James Barras, I think. Gornall there has closed the gap to Harvey, certainly. Harvey still there in fifth position as Owen Hunter sees his pit board, gets a bit of encouragement from the team. He's made it past Ian Jones and up into second position then during the course of this race it's a 13 minute plus one lap race we're now into the second half of it climbing up towards Druids once more the right handed hairpin drop back down towards Graham Hill Bend it's Robertson Hunter that shared the victories last time out as we go back to see more action that's the 59 car going through, which is that of Jim Benson. Some side-by-side -side action there. And a spinner, I'm afraid. That looks to be the number 82 car of Craig Jameson. And one of the drivers as well now getting the black and white driving standards flag, which may well be for exceeding track limits. Jonathan Davis in the... Oh, I was just talking about Jonathan Davis, but it's Adam, uh, Dan Kirby, I should say, that goes very wide at Graham Hill Bend and loses a couple of places. I was about to say, though, that Jonathan Davis, who was... Trying to make a move as the lead is now heading through Paddock Hill Bend once more. A little bit more spread out on this lap, I would venture to suggest. Roberts Hunter and Jones is still the order. Miles there in fourth. Harvey fifth. Gornall perhaps has dropped back away a little bit again in sixth position. Oh, what a big moment for Jonathan Davis. And he's into the gravel trap. And I'm not sure that he'll get out of there. He'll try. But uh, it's been an eventful race for Jonathan Davis after that first corner incident, and now he's gone off into the gravel trap at Paddock Hill Bend. Roberts goes through to start another lap that is still leading this race. He's led since well, basically the start of lap number three. Just briefly put his nose in front of Jones at the start of that lap, the end of lap two. There you can see what a prone position that car is in of Jonathan Davis. Marshall just taking a few paces backwards to well, relative safety and look the red flags have now come out so no real surprise there the race is being stopped we'd had quite a good portion of that race Jonathan Davis's car well stuck into the gravel trap so we'll have a look at the results which were confirmed as Steve Roberts taking the win with a gap of just under a second over Owen Hunter. In third place was Ian Jones, then Richard Wiles, Josh Harvey and James Gornall rounded out the top six. Owen Hunter also got the fastest lap. James Nutt Brown was seventh, Jim Benson eighth, and of Simon Wood and Michael Gray who rounded out the top ten. Still two more races to come though today for the Compact Cup. But first, let's hear from our top three. Steve Roberts, winner there for the first of the Compact Cup races. Back in your own car, back to winning ways. Yeah, I'm really pleased to be out in the new car. Um, it looks fantastic and it actually handles fantastic as well. So uh, we've put a lot of effort into it over the winter. So I was disappointed not to be out in it at Donington. But uh, no, really pleased with the start we've had with it. And of course, uh, wet conditions out there. It looked like you were taking some wide lines just to try and get the, the grip. Is that correct? Yeah, well, kind of, yeah. It was a bit not as technical as that. We we're just trying to stay on the circuit. Uh, Ian gave me the hurry up. Uh, which was appreciated coming down to Graham Hill. So I started to stretch my legs a little bit then, and uh, you know, because I, I was holding the two up, not intentionally. I just couldn't uh, couldn't get the car turned in. Um, I think that's the way we've gone with the setup a little bit. Um, but then I, I started to chance it a little bit more, push a little bit more in the braking zones. And then I think we all just started to try and stay on the circuit pretty much. And it was just a case of uh, the, the conditions changing all, every lap. So it's just a case of trying, um, trying to just stay on the circuit really. Owen Hunter, second place there. Of course, you took uh, a win at Donington Park. You happy with that second? Yeah, very. Um, we didn't have a best of qualifying this morning. The car did, wasn't quite dialed in, but I was glad to get out on a drier track and um, made a good start, which is the most important thing. And um, just judging my corners by what the other two were doing in front of me, so I just had to take it as it comes. Had a good move as well to get past Ian for second place. Yeah, it was a bit hairy because uh, I don't think Ian had much control at the time, but um, he's a good driver, he caught it very well. And um, yeah, I just pinched it, but 
shame I wasn't able to get Steve. Well done Ian, on the podium there, great race for third place, how was that for you? Yeah, it could have been better, uh, made a mistake at Paddock, um, which let Hunter by, um, just run out of laps to try and get second back, don't think we'd have caught Steve, um, if I'm perfectly honest, um, he was on a mission at the end of that race. But these conditions are kind of in between and a race driver really doesn't like those, do they? I don't know, I quite, I quite enjoy it when it's slippery and wet, um, I find it easier to race. <laughs>
up at uh, Druids on the opening lap where he has gone through as well. Declan McDonald's someone we should expect to see a bit further up the order. He's got his wing mirrors hanging off now as a result of that impact with the tyre wall. That won't be helping his course, but to be honest, he's looking forward rather than back during the course of this race. Morgan turning his way now through Graham Hill Bend. On to the straight. Paul Rhodes, you can see with the uh, blue roof. He is a little bit further down the order, but he's doing battle with Alex Dew. So these were the two drivers that we heard from at the top of the show. Dew going through there in car number four. Now these are further down the order than we perhaps expected to see them. But it's reaching roughly 10th place as the 55 car goes off, which is Pavel Blatchett. There's a brief foray through the gravel trappers. Gornal here trying to find a way past Drinkwater. The door handle to door handle through Druids that time. Drinkwater remains ahead as they now turn left through Graham Hill. So that's still the fight for fifth and sixth positions. And he's having a look now on the inside of Drinkwater at Surtees. But Drinkwater, a pretty effective peddler of these cars. 1.9 litre engines. Relatively affordable and accessible way to go very well drive racing. And you can see exactly how popular it's proved with more than 40 drivers entered this weekend. It's a good contingent of cars racing in Scotland as well. And now Gornal does go through around the outside, sealing the move at Paddock Hill Bend. He goes fifth then. Meanwhile, Tovey can't rest here because Ian Jones is putting up a fight. He's still there in second place. Instant is third. In fourth place, we still have that silver coloured car, which is number 65, Simon Roach. Just behind Drinkwater, you've got number 24, Richard Miles. He went well in race one. As we have an off for James, not Brown, actually. Well, James was someone who finished strongly in seventh place in race one, but it looks like a problem for him rather than an off. He's out of the race. Well, you can see the two teammates are together up front now, Tovey and Jones. Very little to choose between them as they go on to the Brabham Straight. The start and finish straight here at Brands Hatch. On board with Ian Jones. Tovey actually there in a straight line. He's just able to stretch away. which we'll suggests that his engine might be that little bit stronger. Now through Paddock Hill Bend. And then back up the rise. Great circuit at Brands Hatch. The Indy circuit. Great for the drivers. Great for the spectators too because you can see most of the circuit from their chosen vantage points. Hinson's still there in third place. There's some traffic that they have to deal with here as well. It's one of the uh, back markers that they're putting a lap on. I think it's the 76 car of Simon Welch. Oh, and that was close, wasn't it? Mark Morton there narrowly missing that part car of James Nutbrown. Morton, the number 26 green car. He went pretty strong, I thought, at Donington. So there's Gornall in number 18. On board with Ian Jones, who's got a problem because the cars are going flying past him now. Ian Jones, well, we said a moment ago that possibly his engine wasn't as strong as Mike Tovey, and I wonder if it is an engine problem that's ruled him out. Oh, what a moment for Paul Hinson. He spins, Simon Roach has to go off in avoidance, and he spins as well. Marshall's run for cover, Roach into the barriers, and the pair that were running in third and fourth position, well, they've put themselves well back down the order now. Roach, has he got the car going? I think he's just waiting for a gap in the traffic. Here's another look. So Hinson lost it, back stepped out. He couldn't control the tank slapper. Roach went off in avoidance onto the wet grass. Just lost control. And a couple of glancing blows onto the barriers. Fortunately, on the part of the barriers protected by the tie wall. So not too much damage, I don't think. Well, where does that leave us? It's really shaken up the order. So it's now, I think, Tovey that is in the lead. It was ever thus. And then up into second place now has gone the uh, 18 car, which is that of James Gornall. So Gornall up to second and Drinkwater is third. That's the car that is being lapped. And they're about to go back onto the Brabham Strait as this race Moving towards its conclusion now, the gap or sink between the first two cars is going to be, well, you'd think, too big to make up, but uh, Gornal might have other ideas about that. You can see there's quite a gap to make up, but Tovey's making up 
quite a lot of ground. That's a back marker that's in between them that he will lap. I think that is the, yes, it's the 45 car of Brendan Murphy. Sometimes to be found on the uh, 750 Most Club Rescue Unit. And in the school of Shotar, you can see is Michael Gray, number 19. Probably not the happiest of weekends for him, but we expected to see him further up to the sharp end of this field in the Compact Cup. He's sort of languishing towards the bottom end of the top ten here. He's having some good battles. Ooh, and a moment there for number five, which is uh, Kevin Denwood, who started on row seven of the grid. Kevin, again, has been a regular in the Compact Cup for a few seasons now. The driver's really showing that the conditions are quite tricky. Greasy rather than full wet, often the most uh, difficult conditions to drive of all. Aaron Morgan once again on board with him in the number seven car. The sales support man from Basingstoke. Some uh, motocross racing in the past as well. Final lap of the race, and look how much closer Gornel is to Tovey now. That gap has really come down, hasn't it? Gornel has really pushed on in these last couple of laps. He's uh, got the fastest lap of the race so far as well, and it's no surprise to see that, really. He continues to push on, but I think he might have left it too late. Onto the Bradford Straight they go. Still a few lengths back from the race leader, so it looks like Toby's going to have this one. Or is he? Because Gordon makes a late dive and he can't quite do it. Toby, though, is overjoyed with his first win in the Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Kevin Denwood and Michael Gray, so they still haven't resolved their battle. And uh, John Watt, that is, in there as well. This is for 10th, 11th and 12th positions. Up to the line they come, and who's going to get it? Over the line they go, and it's, well, very close indeed. And what Denwood and Gray was the order amongst those three. There's the results then. Tovey confirmed his first win in the Compact Cup from James Gornall, but only by seven one hundredths of a second. Drinkwater, Miles, Wood and Dew completed the top six. Further back down the order, Paul Hinton seventh after his spin. Paul Rhodes was eighth, Mark Morton ninth, John Watt completed the top ten. Simon Roach eventually 13th after he went off in avoidance of Paul Hinson. Second race for the Compact Cup, uh, Mike Tovey, first time winner this year and po possibly first time winner in the BMs. Yes, yeah, first uh, win in the Compact Cup. We had a season last year, we came out and tried, had a fair few podiums. Come out in 2015, we finally pulled that win out of the bag, so I'm over the moon. It looks like it was getting better for you as the gap started to grow, but then right towards the end, James Gornel was uh, on your tail once more. Yeah, I could see him slowly reeling me in. The thing is, he was the one who was uh, watching me make mistakes. We had a little bit of uh, a little bit of rain halfway through, which made it a little bit slippy out in front. I was the one making the mistakes first. It did fall apart a bit behind me, but um, I was just yeah watching him reel me in. It wasn't very nice. It's very frantic, of course, with uh, loads of cars on the grid on a very small circuit. Yeah, it was very busy. We uh, we found the back markers quite soon, but uh, managed to pick our way through. So it was uh, it was all okay. Great job. James Gornall coming home in second place there. That was an up and down race for you. Fifth at one stage, then back up to second. Yeah, we had a bit of recovery to do because qualifying wasn't so good for us. And in the first, play, uh, first race, we struggled with, uh, with the rain when it came down, but we made some changes and it was the opposite. So as soon as it started to drizzle, the car seemed to come on and, and uh, it was pretty close there. I was, I was hoping that the back markers would work in my favour, but I think we, we both got uh, slowed up a little bit, so it evened out. It was very good to watch, though, you coming through the field and you're just trying to work out the best grip, as you said, the weather going in your favour towards the end. Yeah, the grip was changing all the time, and if you went slightly off your line, you actually lost quite a bit of time, which was happening to Mike, and I was just trying to be as precise as possible. And it's a shame we didn't have, uh, well, I would say, one more lap, but I think the speed I was carrying cost the line maybe a few hundred yards, and we would have had it, but never mind. David Drinkwater on the podium again in the, the red machine, going very well to that brand. <laughs> yeah, I'm chuffed with third, I think. Um, I had to make my car as wide as possible today. It was a similar issue to what I've had at Donington. James, I had James behind me for quite a while, but he managed to reel me in and go straight past me. So, you know, the guys behind, I think, was it Paul, I think, dropped the wheel, pushed, pushed them off, and Simon. So, you know, I'm grateful for third, but I've got to thank Louis from Aha. Um, he's done tons with the car. Uh, TWG, BMW Automotive, Dan and Cambly. Again, the guys do so much work and Reeve Performance for everything they've done.
The two winners from the earlier races come together in race three. Mike Tovey and Steve Roberts lining up alongside each other on the front row of the grid. Paul Henson and Ben Pearson on the second row. David Drinkwater and Owen Hunter on the third. Simon Roach and Joss Harvey on row four. On board we go with Jonathan Davis. He's on the outside of row five. Away we go. And he sees the gap between the cars ahead of him. He goes between Josh Harvey and Simon Roach there, or at least tries to. Roach is that actually gets ahead, but uh, he, Harvey certainly didn't get such a good start as Davis behind him. Meanwhile, a very good start by Roberts from the outside of the front row. Again, a good start by the man who starts on P2. Roberts it is that leads already by a couple of car lengths as they turn their way through Druids for the first time. Down towards Graham Hill Bend they go. Again, one or two cars getting out onto the grass, as you might expect on that first lap at Druid. Mark Morton it was that uh, was probing the extremities furthest of all. There's Steve Bailey, you can see in the yellow trucks back to number 44 machine. As the leaders already turning their way through Surtees on this opening lap of the race. John Benson going through in the 59 car. He started on row six. Kevin Denwood, of course, we saw in that almost photo finish between three cars at the end of race two for 10th and 11th and 12th positions. Jonathan Davis back on board with him. He's there in the number 27 car. The 19-year-old from Peterborough, a student in motorsport engineering. Oh, and that's Roach that's going off, isn't it, I think? Yes, it is. So Roach having had that delay where he had to spin off in avoidance of Paul Henson and drop back to 13th position when he didn't have the start that he would have wanted to race number two he was running up inside the top six and that's lost him about four places I reckon on board with Owen Hunter probably fairly satisfied with a podium earlier on Did he improve on that this time he had a podium and a win at Donington Park you can see he's got a few cars ahead of him here in that 47 car he's running in fifth at the moment Immediately ahead of him is Ben Pearson, the ex-Geneta Junior racer. Ahead of him is number 52, Paul Hinson, who was the uh, Toyota MR2 champion a few years ago. From Worcestershire, back on board with Hunter then. Been improving his metal at the beginning of this season. Good speed there, out of Hill Bend, up towards Drew as we go. Brake lights going on on the car ahead of him of number 99, which is Pearson. You can see that's actually quite a tight little battle going on there as well because Davis has slotted himself into sixth place, so that's a good start from 10th on the grid. Davis, who had that all too dramatic first race, which ended with him in the gravel trap, which brought out premature red flags to stop the race. Cut it short to, I think it was nine laps in the end. Pearson probing at Paul Hinson, but does he leave the door open for Owen Hunter? No, not on that occasion. Now going quite uh, wide, taking a different line to Hinson, so Pearson is not afraid to try different options here, as here is a challenge on the lead. Again, it's two teammates at the front, Steve Roberts and Mike Tovey. Tovey looked to go round the outside there. Now he's got his first win under his belting compact, so I wonder if it's going to be case of the floodgates being opened. Roberts though, well he's got lots of wins under his belt. Now there's been some contact somewhere because Alex Dew is supporting a bit of damage. 57 car of Mark Skeets just getting it a little bit wrong through that part of the circuit as well. Headlamps ablaze. That is on the car of Ben Pearson. He's trying to out psych Paul Hinson I think but Hinson has the experience and maturity enough not to be put off by the headlamps of the car behind him but look how close those three are running nose to tail Davis the man from Cambridge just a little bit further off them in the fourth place as far as that group is concerned sixth place overall because Tovey and Roberts are a little bit further up the road as you can see in that long shot they're already around Paddock Hill Bend sense that something's got to give in this scrap. It's not going to end with these four cars finishing line astern. Hunter trying to have a look up the inside. Pearson certainly getting close to the back of Hinson's car there. I wonder if we might uh, have some kind of resolution up at Druids on that lap, but it appears not so far. Looks like 
Davis has come back into it a little bit now in number 27. Next up, by the way, in seventh place is the 29 car of Paul Rhodes. Just see here in the back there. Hunter carrying a lot more speed out of McLaren and towards Clearways. He's going to get up alongside Pierce on the inside here. The two of them overlapping now as they come through Clark Curve and onto the Brabham Strait. It's allowed Hinson to pull out a few car lengths. Now Pearson, there's not a lot he can do to defend because Hunter all the way alongside him now and a bit further back. David Drinkwater, he's trying to make up a place as well. That's alongside, is that the 59 car? Yes, I think it is, of Benson and Drinkwater goes through. He makes up a place. That's uh, outside the top six at the moment. Benson's fighting back. Also involved there is Simon Roach as well in the 65, trying to go around the outside of the pair of them. Dan Kirby is uh, involved as well, just a little bit further back. So this is Drinkwater then. I think this is for seventh or eighth position now. Well, we've had another change because not only has Hunter got ahead of Pearson, so through has da so too has Davis. He's gone through as well. So Davis now up into fifth place. And down to sixth has gone Ben Pearson. Whereas he was challenging Paul Hinson for third place not too long ago. Oh, who's that gone off? It's Tovey, isn't it? Tovey, our second place man. Well, he was pushing hard, trying to make a move on the race leader, and he's possibly just overcooked it at Pallet Hill Bend. So, Hinson it is in third position. Hunter now into fourth place. They turn their way through Graham Hill Bend onto the Cooper Strait. We're back on board with Hunter, so what can he do? Not yet in a podium position get there, it will be a clean sweep of podiums in the first four rounds of the championship, but Hinson I know will be keen to stop him through Clark Curve onto the Brabham Strait the leaders about five or six seconds up the road at this point I'm not sure that they'll be caught by any of the top three by any of the next three or four I should say through Pallet Kill Bend up towards the right-hander that drew it once more. Oh, and there's been some contact there. That's the 46 car involved, which is Stuart Wright and also Steve Bailey as well in that 44 car. He has to spin the car back round. Oh, he's got to do a bit of a uh, three-point turn to get the car pointing back in the right direction. And we didn't see the start of all of that, of course. Here's Davis then. You can see that Hunter car ahead with a red stripe. Ahead of him is Hinson. And uh, well, it's getting very tasty indeed as they went around the back mark. And there's contact between Davis, who struggles to control the car, and Hunter. They've both now regained the car, but I think all of that was instigated really as they tried to go past what I think was a slower car. Although that now is Hunter coming under attack, isn't it? Benson here in a good battle with Alex Dew, who's not shown as well here at Brands Hatch as he often does. Oh, and that's uh, Benson getting out of shape through the gravel he goes. And back onto the circuit, but a bit of time lost. Also, we could see there as well, that's Dan Kirby, the Essex-based driver. And the number 28 machine as well. Car dealer from Chelsea. It's his third season. Oh, with some synchronised spinning. It's 10 is certainly one of the cars involved, which is David Whitmore. Couldn't quite work out who that uh, other driver was that's just vacated the scene up at Druids. The 21 car there is that of uh, Nick Jesus, one of the MGA motorsport cars. See them joining the Compact Cup and winning cars in this series. Someone going wide there. Oh, and having a spin. That's the number 33 car. 33 being Clive Brookson. Of a glancing blow. Got that uh, red plate askew. And Steve Roberts now comes through. And the uh, 
very smartly turned out, mainly white car with the Union flag on the roof. Here's Hunter then, still tucked in behind Henderson, and reflecting on what we saw a moment or two ago. I think that's actually, was actually Ben Pearson still involved in the thick of the battle, rather than the back mark as I initially thought. So they go on to the final lap of the race now. And that's Hinson in third, Hunter in fourth position. And in fifth place there, we do have indeed the 99 car of Ben Pearson. Leads a bit further up the road. Roberts has a decent gap after over Tovey, after Tovey had that bit of an off at Paddock a few laps ago. And is Hunter close enough to do anything about Hinson in third place? Rather fancy not, only half a lap to go now. His best chance is probably going to be on the drag to the line if he can get in the toe. But Roberts, about two seconds up the road now from Mike Tovey. It looks like he's going to make it four out of four at the beginning of the season in the Gashox Compact Cup. He really knows he's done it, doesn't he? Over the line he goes. Steve Roberts has another win. It's been a perfect start to the year first four races that he's taken part in he's won four times but you wouldn't think that Paul Hinton had just won the whole championship my word he's celebrating there's a doctor standing by from at the end of this race it looks like he might need it so as Roberts heads back into the pit lane at the end of the race let's have a look at the results confirmation of the win for Roberts by 2.47 seconds but he and Tovey shared the fastest lap 57.97 seconds underneath the David Drinkwater lap record from 2013. Hinson third, Hunter fourth, Pearson and Davis fifth and sixth. Further back David Drinkwater was seventh, Simon Roach eighth, Josh Harvey and Kevin Denwood rounded out the top ten. Matt Stuckling once again spoke to our leading drivers. Steve Roberts, yourself and Mike Tovey shared the win so far today, but you're the man who comes out on top for this one. Well done. Yeah, uh, it was a great race and I knew it was going to be a hard battle with Mike. Um, we both got pretty much exactly the same pace around here. Um, so I just drove, like got a good start, which, which made the race really. So I knew that first lap was going to be the most important, pretty much the, the first run to the first corner, you know. So I managed to get a good start because I was actually on the dry side of the circuit. So um, yeah, was, Mike was a di disadvantage with that, um, but yeah. I got into the lead and then just tried to just pound in the qualifying laps, but he just stuck to my bumper. So I thought it was going to be for a long, hard 15, 16 laps. But like I say, we're pushing really hard. And Mike, unfortunately for him, made a mistake and it gave me the gap and then I could just settle into a pace. But then I got caught with some lappers. And uh, so Mike came back at me a little bit. So I got back on it, but we just kept the same gap all the way through and I was trying everything to get away from him again. But we just had the same pace uh, as I think. I think we both got equal fast, fastest laps. So yeah, it was a good race. Mike Tovey, second place this time round. You tried your absolute hardest to get past Steve Roberts. Wasn't quite enough, though. No, I tried too hard at some points. A uh, little mistake over Paddock Hill. A little lock-up just, uh, just edged me into the gravel, which, like I said, like Steve said, lost me a few seconds. Give him a little breather. Got, got a chance to get his head down and pull away, and I just couldn't reel the gap back in. Of course, you two had a, a nice margin over the rest of the field, so nothing too much to worry about. Yeah, both of us in the team rule motorsport, so uh, we had our little talk before. Our plan was to get our head down, let's not be silly, let's not battle, let's get ourselves a gap and then maybe deal with it towards the end of the race. But me making that mistake, uh, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't let that happen. Paul Hinton on the podium there in the BMW Compact Cup. Uh, what a titanic battle that was with yourself and youngster Owen, uh, Owen Hunter out there. Yeah, that was an amazing fight. I mean, um, I think I must have been defending for the whole 15 minutes, firstly from Miles, um, and then I saw Miles drop back a little bit, and then Owen was on me for a good seven or eight laps, and he just doesn't go away. So I was just taking all the tight lines, trying to not make any mistakes, no locking up, and um, just make it really difficult for him to get past. And uh, yeah, it uh, feels good to be uh, on the podium again. And that's when it starts getting tricky as well, of course, with the conditions we've had today. If you go one or two wheels off that line, it can get quite, quite uh, tricky out there. Yeah, absolutely. You just got to run the race in line, and then you know that people aren't likely to break you. Uh, you know, in the zones that are a bit more damp. And I know there were some places where he was faster than me. And when we were in those zones, I just went tight line, tried to go around the outside a couple of times, and uh, yeah, just managed to keep him off. But it's uh, it's nice because you know we were P2 potentially in the first race and didn't quite make it. We were at Donington, front row of the grid, so it's nice to get the monkey off my back now. Well, those two wins take Steve Roberts to 201 points, 13 clear of Mike Tovey with 10 rounds of the championship left to go. Hunter drops to third place, Gornall improves to fourth 
with David Drinkwater slipping back to fifth position. Well, that's all we've got time for at Brands Hatch. Join us again soon.